Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're all healthy and doing well in your lives. So for today, I wanted to do an informative video to talk about, as you can guess, brushes. So here, as you can see, I have different brushes. Those are from my own collection. And some I use them often and some I don't use them that much. And I wanted to talk about these brushes for two main reasons. The first one being that some people wanted me to do a video talking about different watercolor brushes and the second reason is since when I started new in the world of watercolor I was overwhelmed especially when I used to go to art shops I used to see different types of brushes there were oil brushes there were acrylic brushes there were watercolor brushes so I wanted so I got overwhelmed by the different types and shapes and I was lost which one to choose this is why in this video I wanted to do a video to talk about the different types of hairs used in watercolor and also different shapes that are commonly used in the watercolor world and if you are a beginner or even an intermediate or a expert painter this video might be helpful for you especially refreshing your knowledge about brushes or even broadening your horizon of knowledge of brushes and maybe you'll discover a brush that you didn't know about and you want to try out in your art journey so basically this video will be divided into three main parts the first part will talk about the different types of hair used in watercolor brushes the second would be about the different shapes and different styles that they come in and finally at the end we will talk about what i would recommend you to use as a person who is starting out new in the world of watercolor or what will get you 80 percent the way of what you will need in most of your paintings so please stick around and i hope this video is helpful so let's get into it so first of all i want to talk to you about the different parts of a watercolor brush so watercolor brushes are usually made up of three main parts this is the handle this is the ferrule and this is the bristles of the brush so these are the three main parts and as you may know that brushes come in basically two main types the first one being a synthetic brush and the other one being natural brush which comes from animals and there's also a less known variety which is a mix or blend between natural and synthetic now we will briefly talk about the different types of hairs in which watercolor brushes come from the first type of hair that we'll be talking about we'll talk about the kolinsky sables so as you can see these are all made from kolinsky sable hair and as you can see it's a light brown color and this is made from natural hair and they are the most expensive watercolor brushes that you will find in the watercolor world so the type of hair that they are made up is actually from the tail of siberian weasels so siberian weasels are animals which are found in the in china and russia and mongolia and also siberia their scientific name is mustella siberica they are very known for having specific characteristics that watercolor artists and enthusiasts usually prefer in watercolor brushes so the first characteristic that these watercolor brushes have is the snippiness or the stretchiness of the hair as you can see i have wet the hair and as i try to flick the tip of the hair it returns to its natural form as you can see in the video and this springiness is what watercolor artists usually like in their watercolor brushes since it would give them control in their washes and they can go from very thin to very thick in their different washes and also the second most important characteristic of this natural hair is being that it has it has the capability of holding a lot of water as you can see my finger is really wet from just a simple dip and not only does it hold a lot of water it also disperses water evenly on the paper which is a very important characteristic that is 
important in watercolor since you don't want uh, to paint something and as you lay the brush on paper it will disperse all the water on paper and ruin the art that you have so having these characteristics may and the fact that they are mined after real animals like the tail of an animal and makes this one of most the most expensive hairbrush type in the watercolor world the second type of hair that we're going to look at is the squirrel hair again it's made from as you can know the tails of squirrels and they are very very soft they're softer than the siberian weasel they are very very fluffy as you can see especially when they're dry and this is the mo second most expensive hairbrush and brush type that is sought after by many watercolorists and the reason for people to like this watercolor brush is as you can see here I have dipped it in water is the fact that it comes to a very sharp point as you can see similar to the Kolinsky sable but what it has is that it can hold a lot of water so much more than the Kolinsky's and even it has this property that the hair if you it's really soaked up water as you can see doesn't spring back to its natural form so some artists like this loose or being flimsy in their hair type and some like some artists really like this since they will not fight against the brush in that term and it will hold its shape the way you bend it so this is one of the main characteristics of this brush type uh, other than the fact that it holds a lot of water so this type of it's really versatile and many artists usually use this in combination with uh, with the Kolinsky's to balance between the springiness and the capability of holding water for the third type of hair we'll talk about is the ox hair ox hair is usually i do not own any ox hair brushes sadly but i can post some pictures here and the characteristics of ox is actually being very stiff and they are much stiffer than the squirrel and they are relatively cheaper than the squirrel and also since it's very uh, stiff and very like thick it is more durable than squirrels since as you know the squirrel hair is very fluffy as you saw in the previous part as you can see here also it's very soft and very thin the hair bristles are very thin the ox hair is thicker and actually the thickness makes it more durable and it makes it more stiff to lay strokes and being ox it is even more cheaper than this squirrel brush so the fourth type of hair is the goat hair and this is also very much known in the watercolor world goat hair is comes in different colors as you can see here it's off-white color well it is tinted blue because of my paint but as you can see here it's off-white color and also you, it comes in this dark brown blackish color and this is made from goat and goat hair is much cheaper than squirrel it holds a lot of water similar to squirrel and it also is very versatile so that means that it can be used in different type of like brushes for example this is a mop brush this is like a simple round brush and finally this is a hake brush if you know what a hake brush is it's basically a brush that is it comes in this form and it's usually made from goat hair and has this chisel type of like chisel type end and we'll get into the different shapes later but goat hair is very known it's the third most expensive brush hair type that is 
found in the watercolor world and it is softer than the ox hair but stiffer than the squirrel hair and also it is way cheaper than the squirrel hair and it holds similar like I would say similar water quantity to the squirrel brush the final brush from the natural brush lineup will be the pony and sadly again I don't have any references or brushes but I can post a picture here they are usually found in the student grade brushes and they are the softer type of brush uh, they lean they are way softer than the ox and the goat and they hold more water than the ox and the goat and they are the cheapest type of natural brush hair that you can find and you can find these types of hairs and usually the student grade or the uh, like the introductory graduate type of hair it's not the most professional and uh, but it's in between like being a professional and student so you can find this types of hair and the graduate or the student plus I may say section of brushes and finally I have many brushes of these these are synthetic all of them are synthetic and ba basically they are made from nylon and these are the cheapest of uh, different brushes and they are the cheapest even from the natural brushes they are easily found easily made usually makeup brushes are made up from synthetic brushes like this and they are wildly found and they are very cheap and they come in different shapes the disadvantages of this is basically there are even different levels or types of this hair some of them being cheaper than others but one of the greatest types that's usually from the known manufacturers for example da vinci uh, for example this one this is from da vinci and usually da vinci brushes are really good especially they're synthetic and they can mimic the properties of sable brushes which is the most expensive so the thing that this type of watercolor brushes lack is first the quality their quality is like for example most of them are worse than the natural one since the natural is more expensive they take care of that more they are hand checked and stuff so this comes in a less like lower caliber the other disadvantage is the fact that they don't hold as much as water as the natural ones and the final thing that it is not like disadvantage is the fact that they wear out fairly easily like you i have some brushes that are like really worn out after like for example a couple months of use of but i have i use it usually extensively so usually natural hair brushes are more durable being the fact that they are made from natural bristles and synthetics are usually less durable and they end up being like uh, and they end up fuzzing out and not holding a point after some time you can also have a brush that is basically a mixture of two types of hair to take the advantages of each hair for example this one is a combination of goat hair and the sable hair and it's used to take the advantage of the snappiness of the sable hair and the amount of water that the goat hair holds so this is co combining two types of hair makes this Chinese brush a very versatile brush in the use you can use it in different ways and for different applications so for the second part of this video I will go into the details of the different shapes and types in which watercolor brushes come in so these are quite few more than the types or the types of hairs that are made of they have like there are many different shapes and styles they come into so the types that I will cover now they are some of what is usually known since they come in different even crazy shapes 
so those are basically the most known in the watercolor world and uh, those are the most used and i will tell you briefly about the advantages of each one and where it could be used and if you want to know more about details of each one i can do a separate video where i take a brush and i talk extensively about the uses and disadvantages the advantages and stuff but that will be out of the scope of this video so let's get into the second part so the first type of brush or shape of brush is the round brush which is known in the watercolor world a lot and the round brush basically is it having a round belly and having a point and this is very useful in different like scenarios you can use it uh, extensively in different forms but basically this is used for like line work detailed work any type of general use and this is the most versatile brush type or shape that is used within watercolor artists and as you can see not all of them are wet some of them fluffy and dry and some of them are are wet like this one but basically round brushes have a round belly and they have a point for example this one is from da vinci and it has an extra long point the other hand this is from the graduate level of Windsor and Newton and you can see it has a point but it's not as long as the Da Vinci one let me show you in the video there is the extra long or extra long tip and this is the standard tip and this come in different also variations for example round fuller body round uh, pointier or longer point and uh, yeah those are the most versatile type of brushes these are the flat brushes and as you can see it has a flat edge and the hake brush is also a type of a flat edge brush as i wet it down you can see that it holds a chisel tip which is very sharp and you can like make it as sharp as you want so flat brushes are usually used for big washes usually and they are really good for doing like angular work if you're into doing like architecture with angles and stuff this is very helpful and doing straight edges and stuff and this type of brush is also very versatile and useful and it can play the double role of doing like large washes or even detailed structures that are very angular and stuff so this is the second most known type or shape of watercolor brush the third most known type of brush is the mop brush as you can see here it resembles the mop in which you use to mop the floor and that's why it's called the mop brush and it's usually made up of as we have said goat hair or squirrel and it's usually fluffy and it helps and this is not for detailed work because it lays down a lot of water and hard to control the water consistency but what this is really helpful for is doing big washes and it's usually important to do the first or primary washes with this type of hair and where you want to cover a huge area with water so these come in handy in this scenarios but some artists even use this throughout the whole painting and they do uh, like detailed work with them but uh, keep in mind that you have to be really skilled in managing the water in it because it holds a lot of water and you have to manage how much water it absorbs and also puts on the water another form of brush that i i have but it's not exactly what a filbert brush looks like i will be posting the picture here and what this is is actually a, a hybrid between the round brush which we saw being this one and the flat brush which is this one 
So this comes as if the com it's the combination between those two and it's it has the advantages of you can go slightly angular as you can with the flat brush and also you can do large washes and even detailed work the same way you do with the like the versatility of the round brush so this filbert brush is also known and uh, filbert brushes are well known also in the world of oil paint painters they really like to use filbert brushes and some variations of filbert brushes are cat's tongue brushes which are less known in the watercolor world but they are also similar to they're like a type of filbert brush another form of brush that's really known is the rigor brush which has this very long bristle as you can see and usually it's very thin and some of them are springier than the others and they are as well made of different hair types and stuff but the use of this is basically doing very fine lines like usually that it is used to do like the rigors of the boat and stuff and also lines and like for example if you're doing line works or calligraphy they use this brush it's usually also referred to as a script brush because all the time they used to do calligraphy with it and the reason or the advantages of this very long bristle is actually dampening the motion of your hand or the vibration in your hand so it gives this very smooth line and transitions between the angles another variation of the flat brush is a chiseled end or uh, angular brush and usually it's simply a flat brush with a specific angle and this also has different uses those are more into like the league of specialty brushes for example this one and the fan brush which i will be posting a picture here those are more of a specialty type of brushes and they are not as much used in the watercolor world or it's much it's not that much useful uh, in my opinion as the others uh, but if you want they do exist for the last part type well the last is all relative because you can do many different types is this one which is actually a water brush which i put it in a different like specialty type it's basically different like it comes in different shapes but actually holds water and you can squeeze it and as you can see it disposes water from it it's very useful and like plain air painting or sketching or outdoor painting because you have what instead of carrying your water you will have only this and finally this you have exotic brushes for example this one as you can see it's a combination between like a rigger and the and the simple round brush it has a very full body and very pointy edge like rigger so you can get as crazy as you want and if i'm gonna cover all the types I would not like I uh, it, it would take a lot of time to cover all type of brushes with one there are different weird types of brushes that are made by especially by Da Vinci they have a very large amount of brushes they have specialty brushes because they also do makeup brushes if you didn't know so yeah this is how crazy some brushes can go for example this one and also you have this type of cheap brushes and also there is another specialty brush which is called the scrubber as you can see here it basically does what it is named after it scrubs it's usually made from hard hog brush and it's used to like scribble and like scrub stuff or paints that you want to remove it's not highly recommended because if you don't have like good quality paper for example cotton paper the scrubbing or excessive scrubbing will damage the paper but yeah those also exist to scrub the paint that you want and they're stiff and they don't hold a lot of brush or a lot of water i mean and uh, the hog brush is usually used for oil paints and more stiffer mediums so thank you so much if you have stick till the end of this video and for the last part of this video i just want to tell you what are my recommendations 
for basically what will get you covered 70 or 80 percent of what you will need in your watercolor painting and this is very useful for beginners who are lost and sorry if the information is overflowing or it's intimidating but i wanted to just briefly cover the types of video if you want me to do like a separate video on each type of hair or if each shape just let me know in the comment section below i would more than happy do that and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each but uh, for the last part let me tell you what i recommend for everyone who is going to do like for example an a5 size or a4 size painting what are the basic brushes that i recommend so what i recommend is first a size 4 brush and i know that brush size is very like different for each brand but all of them usually have the same the same size scheme and it might not vary that much from brand to brand even though it might not be the specific size but it won't have a drastic like change in the size but for the like general use i would recommend a round brush size 4 brush and i'll also recommend a size 8 or 10 brush which is also a round brush or if you would like to you're on a budget you can grab yourself a flat brush which is uh, some people call it uh, size 4 but basically it's if you're gonna measure the like the size of the edge it would be like uh, one centimeter and a half I would recommend this type of flat brush and finally I would recommend a very important part which is a size this is a this is size 0 I'll grab the bigger one which is a size 1 I would recommend a mop brush or something that helps you put a big amount of water so either it's size 2 or bigger uh, those are fairly small if you're going to do like an A4 size painting but I would recommend a f like a mop brush to put a lot of water I would recommend something in the middle to do like a very like either a flat brush if you're interested in architectural stuff and angular or a simple round brush in the size 8 or 10 if you're going to do uh, like simple details not a lot of details and for the details and for the small stuff you'll go into like a size 4 not smaller for small detailed work and if you have good quality either it's natural or synthetic but good quality brush you will have a very nice point so it won't have it won't give you a problem in doing these details so these are the only brushes i recommend to start out with now you can go and spend money and get other exotic brushes for example the ones that i showed or for example fan brushes but as i can tell you that from my experience those are the three types of brushes that you might all need in your watercolor painting and it is most of the brushes used by professionals are these type of brushes so i hope this video is helpful if you have any questions or anything regarding the content in this video please let me know in the comment section below if you like it please leave a like and share with people who are interested in watercolor and subscribe you would be really helping me a lot thank you guys i hope to see you in the next video with more tips and information bye stay safe